my god, you guys! You it guys, is. we're recording on Saturday mm-hmm. morning. So <laughs> drinking, mm-hmm. drinking champagne. Cheers! Cheers! To cheers! S- to celebrate. Mm. And we're back together again. I know. So we all, I'm back from Missouri and we all recently tested negative. I got my negative COVID results this morning. Yeah. Uh, so we're safe to be around each other and um, the sun is shining. The sun is shining. It's a good People day. are dancing in, in the, the streets. Oh, honking. Ventura Boulevard is just lit up. Someone was skipping, walking their dog, legitimately yeah. a grown person mm-hmm. skipping. Yeah, from skip joy. dancing. They were skip dancing, uh, walking their dog while we were outside with champagne flutes, mm-hmm. like glass champagne flutes on the <laughs> sidewalk. So, um, if that tells you how yeah, we're feeling this before morning. Before 11. <laughs> yeah. Yes. That's, it's uh, going to be a good day. Oh, gosh. No. I feel like, okay, I was so excited um, before I came over here that I actually, I put my underwear on inside out. <laughs> it's still inside out. I didn't even fix it. Like, I was like, well. <laughs> this is where we're at. This is where we're at. Oh, oh my uh, God. Just, you know, I know it's it's been a long week. Uh, I, you know, I was thinking about what I was going to say for that bit at the end that we do when we're like you know what were you watching this week i was like i was, <laughs> was legitimately 100 yeah. percent the map show yeah the all end. week <laughs> yeah i can't i i i couldn't do it man i i watched a lot of cnn but i wasn't glued to it the way that i feel like some people were um Us. because you guys yeah, <laughs> yeah because i was just like it was filling me with so much anxiety and i was like there's nothing i can do i'm out of there I, there's no, I don't have any control over yeah, this situation sure. yeah. whatsoever, and it's freaking me out. Um, mm-hmm. But, oh, God, man, the memes have been getting me through. Mm. And somebody made a TikTok, this woman, and I was like, that is absolutely true, where she was like, I'm in a relationship with these people. Like, yeah. all the people on oh, CNN, yeah. she's like, I wake up to them. I go to bed to them. Mm-hmm. They've seen me in my bonnet. I eat breakfast, mm. lunch, and dinner with them. Yep. <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Steve Kornacki and I are bonded for yeah. life now. I, yeah, he doesn't know it. But map Daddy. He doesn't. Mm. Oh, Map Daddy. Map Daddy. <laughs> you guys. <laughs> real. Dude, I I was like, Eric, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm like, he's he's kind of hot. He's like, I don't, I don't blame you. <laughs> <laughs> it's something about a guy in front of a big map mm. doing math. I was just like, I had <laughs> the biggest nerd crush for him. He doesn't play for our team, though, does he? No, That's no, right. he doesn't. It's okay. Eric's going to take one for the team. That's right. That's right. You can, you can be a thruple. Bring him in. Oh, you know? <laughs> I, I loved him. Yeah, but I love the fact, because mine was MSNBC, mm. because something about Rachel Maddow, love. like, really calms me because i'm like she's got this yeah. maybe she's, i should have done that I, because i was watching cnn and same. it was stressing me out same. like i was like god damn i'm stressed and joy reed on msnbc is mm. life that woman is so savage and wonderful and was i i you're right it is like family because I'm like, oh, and now it's now it's, uh, you know, uh, Brian Williams dulcet tones are going to soothe me. <laughs> <laughs> and then Joy Reid's going to come in all mm-hmm. hot. And, and Keegan and I are over here with Wolf Blitzer like, <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Wolf. <laughs> You're stressing me out. Wolf. Oh, God. Oh, it was damn. it was more John. What's his face? Oh, I know that guy. The John ma- King. He, is, he is not a map daddy. Lord. He was <laughs> killing me. I was like, will you please stop? Stop that doing that thing. That man was stressing stop me doing out. It. He's like, it's a roller coaster. I'm like, it sure is. Thank yeah. you very much. Like, oh my God. Yeah. Ooh. The other winner of the presidential election, the fucking ratings mm. for they, I, at a certain point, I thought they've got to be dragging this out because so <laughs> yeah. many people are watching. They know everybody's. But watching. at the same time, though, I was like, honey, like they, mm. I'm like, well, did you sleep at all? Have you slept no. at all? Like no. in the last week? Because like Savannah they were- Guthrie and, um, oh shit, what's his name? The guy from Dateline, uh, Luther Black, Black Guy. Lester Holt. Lester Holt. Yeah, <laughs> Luther. I was like Luther. Who's Luther? <laughs> Luther? Not little Luther. Big Luther. <laughs> no, yeah, Steve Kornacki, they were making jokes about it. He would get like, I don't know, like a half an hour break mm-hmm. to like nap and eat a cheese stick and then They all looked pretty fresh though, I have to say, because I'm like, if that were me, if I don't get at least eight hours. Mm. I look like the walking dead the next day. So I'm like, how the fuck? Do you think they just have cots in their like 
they room, gotta. like in their dressing rooms, and they're just like nap in between and just change and come back. But out. like how? Yeah. Like I was looking at them, and these are the thoughts, right? <laughs> I was looking at like one of the the female anchors on CNN, and I was like, God, her makeup looks amazing and it's mm-hmm. like day three and i'm like is she washing her face and having them redo it because you can't just keep putting mm-hmm. like powder on or you're gonna look like a cake face these are the questions yeah <laughs> i have <laughs> after a week's worth of watching the same people yeah they mm-hmm. obviously like didn't have time to go home and take a shower or honestly those like makeup that. people and hair people deserve an emmy mm. they really do oh my god would that be the most <laughs> the most <laughs> the emmys come around next year <laughs> hair and makeup teams from each uh news network i mean yeah. honestly though because I'm, i was really impressed i was like how do they look okay they look i mean i'm just sitting here in my own apartment and i look way worse oh my god. You know, like, I don't understand. And I slept. <laughs> <laughs> I I didn't this mm-hmm. week, so I'm I'm a little out of it. My routine um being abolished from no longer working um had me like and the anxiety sure had me up until around midnight take a couple hours of sleep and then I would get up at like two thirty three every day start looking to Mm -hmm. see if any new state had been called or anything like that and not be able to get back to sleep, get sleepy around like one o'clock or so, take a couple hours nap up again till midnight. So that has been since the election, my my schedule. Yeah, man, I couldn't on election night because I was so scared of a repeat of 2016 Mm -hmm. where I'm like, my bar was so low. I'm like, as long as I don't end up crying in the bathtub with a bottle of wine, then it's a, it's a win for me. Mm -hmm. Um, But I was scared of that happening again. So literally on election night, I was in bed at 10 30 PM popped some Z quill and like, out out by 11 i was like i don't want to torture myself by watching water boil <laughs> that's exactly you know right. like yeah. watching the news because i i knew we weren't gonna know that night i didn't know it was gonna take till fucking saturday right. but um whew. glad glad we're here yeah glad we're safe yeah really glad that we're safe Hope everybody despite, is safe. yeah despite people trying to inflame the situation i'm super super glad everybody is safe Mm -hmm. that i think is is a big part of another thing i'm celebrating today is that you know we can all start the process of of healing and working because the work's not done oh no the work is not done just because you know we have a president you know uh i i was super inspired by stacy abrams Mm -hmm. this week queen just really um, getting her story out there and and all the work she did, um, I think was a big inspiration for me that she worked really hard for something. It didn't work out and she didn't give up. She was just like, no, let's change tactics. Let's get to work. And yeah. so, yeah. I hope she's part of Biden's cabinet, dude. Oh, oh that would be yeah. mm. that would be amazing. I hope it happens. I, I'll tell you what. I you you nailed it earlier, Christina, when you said called her the patron patron saint of uh, voting mm-hmm. she really is this her year. and john lewis i feel like those oh, yeah. two are <laughs> you know truly icons for real man and uh, again i know we say this every time we we end up talking politics on this show we we know we're not a political podcast and so like if you're feeling some kind of way about it i get it but this has literally been our lives for the last week like mm-hmm. it's basically all we've been thinking about mm-hmm. doing feeling um, and part of our job is to express that to you all and to share our lives with you guys. And that's where we're at. It's just where we're at. Yep. So. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. We were talking about even making uh, the fuck, Mary kill of the uh, news different news anchors that got us yeah. through this <laughs> this week. Election daddies. Oh, mm, 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 mm. Mm. All the map daddies. What's up? I mean, OK, the hottest news anchor. We got to be honest. Chris. Cuomo. We gotta be honest. God, I mean, that, that's fucking a fuck TikTok. boy who's gonna break your heart. But that fucking TikTok where that bitch was like, he could run me over with his car. I was yes. like, this is the best. Have you seen his arms? I mean, okay. Dude. And so I do want to say that, like, yeah, our um inspiration to do this as a fuck Mary kill it does come from uh, f- at Fashion Girl f- 
42069 on TikTok because she did a whole like rating of all of the different news anchors on her TikTok. And I saw that and I was like, yes, yes, (laughs) yes, yes. But yeah, Chris, Chris Cuomo, hot, hot. Definitely. Gonna ruin your life oh, for yeah. sure, but like hot. But I'm here yeah. for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's my pick for it. What about you guys? Who are you gonna pick? Hmm. You know what? Um, I'm gonna go with a classic, uh, and I'm gonna go Anderson Cooper. Actually, yes. I'm gonna go Anderson Cooper because that Silver obese turtle. Fox. Jesus, that obese turtle comment. Fucking honestly, fire, Slays. fire, Slays. fire. Um. um yeah. God, I actually spent a lot of my time, yes, on CNN, but I also spent a lot of my time on NBC. So I had a lot of Lester Holt, a lot, a lot mm. of Chuck Todd. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, 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 don't do it, girl. <laughs> uh, okay, so for you, then I won't pick Chuck Todd. Oh, God. I mean, you can, but just know I'm going to kill him. I mean, I, um, Savannah Guthrie is the hottest bitch I've seen. Ooh. Okay. All right. She was, she okay. was, uh, and I was enjoying her. She was like kind of making fun of herself. I just, you know, I enjoyed her. Okay. All right. Savannah Guthrie, Anderson Cooper. Mm, mm, hard. And Chris Cuomo. Oh, shit. I should have yeah. let, pick- let you pick Chuck Todd so that I could oh, have God, it easier. Yeah. See, like, you should have. Because this is actually difficult. I mean, well, yeah. first of all, let's just get it out of the way. You know what? I'm calling it. Today is a blessing of a day. And it is Fuck Mary Friend. Oh, oh okay. okay. All right. All right. All right. That does change it. Right. Like, but I mean, I am going to put it on the table. I mean, I'm fucking Cuomo. Like, I mean, right. That <laughs> night to. has everything. Yeah, it does. Mm-hmm. It's got his arms. We're having mm. beers. Mm. We're having, oh, we're He's go- going to, yeah, you're going to have like a juicy steak mm. or like mm-hmm. a really yeah, good are. burger. Mm-hmm. You know, like it, he's going to do it up like that it's it's a treat yourself night uh, oh and you will get treated yeah, you uh, will get treated no yeah, he, he will never call you again but no that night will be magical mm-hmm. yeah so. i i feel some wall action coming oh you know what i'm he's talking gonna about. pick you up he's, oh, gonna, he's strong easy. enough yes oh. 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 on either side of the wall oh. Oh. you know what i've like mm. you always see that in mm-hmm. movies where people like but fuck have you ever up done against it? a wall but no i've never done it it's not comfortable it, it, i feel like it wouldn't be but he easy. looks strong enough oh yeah just <laughs> those arms and no and no matter how big the guy is that you're doing that with you feel like you're it's it's like th- i feel heavy and i'm never gonna come this way yeah no <laughs> like, it's still hot dude it is. i don't know why i love walls so much <laughs> i feel like chris cuomo it's a strong hand on the neck vibes oh. you know what i mean Mm-hmm. Like not even necessarily oh. pressure, just like a just like a, a hand, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. Yeah. So I'm into it. Yeah. I'm on board a hundred percent. So I you gotta you gotta fuck Cuomo. Yeah. That's yeah. Just, I think we all agree on that. Yes. yes. Yeah. I think we can agree probably across the board on all this. Oh, right. Because well, I'm gonna marry Anderson Cooper. Me too. Okay. He seems yes. just like the really best. sweet, smart, a good dad. Yeah. Like great eyes. Great oh, eyes. Beautiful eyes. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, super smart, just so intelligent. You could have the best conversations with him. He is not a fuck boy at all. Mm-mm. No, I just you know like he's just and yeah, the conversations would be lit. Like oh. you're gonna be drinking red wine and oh. talking yes. all night. I love it. All Almost night. as sexy it. as Cuomo against the wall. Mm. Mm-hmm. And you know, I do. I want Savannah in the girl gang for yep. real. Like Friend. I feel like we're gonna have some fun girls nights like oh. she strikes me as somebody who's got a freak flag yep. that yes. like when you go yep. to vegas that mm. bitch is getting down <laughs> like you Litty know what titty. i mean mm, 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 mm. yes yes <laughs> definitely oh my god i was just reading this morning about some like heiress back in like the 20s or whatever that uh went to this like all girls school and her mean girl gang was called the bitch pack and i was like <laughs> uh, wow uh, i love that they're just like they're, no pretense no <laughs> they didn't even try to be witty no they're just like we're a bitch pack <laughs> bitch call it as it is she i'm is. like in the like 20s i'm like i'm here for it i'm, I'm here like, for it i kind of feel like that's what we should call ourselves. i know now i'm like no, are we gonna change the nap to <laughs> the bitch pack bitch, bitch pack <laughs> Love it. oh, oh my god you guys what a i it's almost hard to come up with anything to talk about just because everything is so it, it, our, it literally, our entire week has been go vote, voting election, you know, like watching the polls. Watch it's the just, map show. Like, it, the map show. Right. I mean, and there's, I, I realize that maybe by the time this episode comes out on Wednesday, people are going to be so freaking sick Over of it. it. <laughs> and like, you know, but as of right now, I mean, 
I was still in bed when we got the news mm-hmm. that Biden had won. Um, so it's just it's the only thing on my mind. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. And I I want it out in the world. Like yeah. what a what a celebration. Yeah. It is. I'm like, you know, driving over here from West Hollywood and people are dancing in the streets. Mm-hmm. People are honking. People are celebrating. It means so much to so many people. Yeah. Um and as a woman mm-hmm. seeing Madam Vice President elect yeah. Kamala Harris wow. is not just a woman but a woman of color That's exactly right. in in that position. It's um yeah, I mean and, and I almost I, cried honestly. I, I, swear I don't want to wanna, I, I cried on my walk over here, like not gonna lie. Um, but like I, I don't want it to come across as though we think like, oh well, we're done now, because like mm-hmm. we don't. We mm-hmm. know that there's a lot more to do. Um, the work doesn't stop here. I encourage everybody to continue doing the work. But for today, for right now, we can all just like breathe. You know, Cassie was saying like for the first time, it feels like we've been collectively holding our breath for four years i didn't even realize it to be honest Mm -hmm. with you chris came in today woke me up out of bed and i said to him i said i feel like i have been holding my breath for four years and didn't realize until today Mm -hmm. yeah like i feel a weight has been lifted off the country's shoulders i feel like i feel like the world's shoulders yeah did you see like there were lots of memes and tweets of people from other countries who are like not even in the u.s just like refreshing news (laughs) watching what's happening yeah you know because we're all feeling i mean Oh, oh. Um, yeah, but OK, so all of that being said, um, we have a new patron. So Yay. I want to give a big shout out on this momentous day uh, to Jennifer McDonald. Welcome to our Patreon family. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And since we're together again, we'll have lots of opportunities. Yeah. Um, we're planning stuff for the next few weeks to Mm -hmm. record stuff and put some fun stuff on Patreon. And it's getting to be the season, Christmas season. Mm -hmm. Holidays. So season. We've got tons of merch. Uh, We're probably going to end up putting something else up in the next couple of weeks too. So, Mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, don't get forget your, that new Yikes yourself. on Bikes is up there. And yeah. there will definitely be um, holiday sales as well. Mm-hmm. So um, follow us on Instagram um, at My Worst Date Podcast. So follow us on Instagram or Twitter at Worst Date Pod if you want to get like all of the info about when we're having sales. That's usually where it goes up. Um, so make sure that you're following us there. Uh, but Jennifer, we're so excited to have you. Also, we will be recording today day a uh, another crazy in love movie episode we're doing the family stone so if you are five dollars or up on our patreon you will get to listen to that so we have a lot to say yeah a lot to Such say yeah oh yeah i love that movie <laughs> i do too oh god i feel strong I about my pick <laughs> well you guys want to take five and then we'll come back with stories Sounds yes good. and we're back all right Cass, kick oh. us off Sorry, I was on the wrong page. I was uh, oh, just over here smiling. No big deal. <laughs> and we're back. Okay. All right. So I got my story from Reddit. Um, okay. It says, we chatted for two weeks. I'm off the apps, but still take, uh, talking to old matches. And everything seemed totally normal. He's tall, attractive, good career, volunteers with animals, lives alone in the city, excellent conversationalist via text. Did I say that right? Conversationalist. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it sounded funny coming out of my mouth for some reason, <laughs> but I've been drinking bubbly. So here we are. Uh, we meet for an early happy hour today and he's 20 minutes late. No big deal. But later I found out that That's he lives of... in the building next door to the bar. Within the first 10 minutes, Wait, I asked. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. 20 minutes late. If you were the first of all, all you had to do is come downstairs. 20 minutes late. No big deal. I understand, but you better have called me like, mm-hmm. or texted me and been like, hey, I'm running late or something's going on, whatever. Like, You have to let me know you yeah. can't just be 20 minutes late. Like, yeah. that That's annoying to me, first so of all. Annoying. Then if I find out you live next door, bitch, I had to get in my car and drive here, yeah. find a parking spot, mm-hmm. get a table, do all that shit, and you could have just rolled out of bed. Mm-hmm. And no. down the stairs. No. Yeah. No. And I hope you roll down the stairs next time. Within the first 10 minutes, I asked him if he was already drunk. He said no and asked why. I said because he seemed awfully slow. Took at least a minute to unbutton his coat. Oh, <laughs> Can no. you imagine? 
Kids moving yep. at the same pace as they moved in Nevada to count those ballots. Oh, Just like, here one, it is. Two. <laughs> Start it back at one. <laughs> and he told me he's always slow. After the date, when he texted me for a second date, I asked the dude what, uh, what drugs he was on because he was definitely on drugs. Later, he revealed that he hasn't cooked in over a year. He showed me his Grubhub <laughs> order history like a badge of honor. No, oh, no. It's a pass. He no. then told me about his best Bumble date, during which a woman invited him over to her home and pegged him. <gasps> Oh, hey, came out the gate strong. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hi, first date. Nice to meet you. Then he told me he was interviewed for some show, Married at First Sight, but they <gasps> didn't pick him because he had brought his cat to the interview. Oh, okay, wait, wait, <laughs> wait, wait. This you story did. has everything. First of all, that. I did start watching Married at First Sight. Our yep. listeners will be happy to know that I'm not solely on the housewives train at this moment um and i was texting cassie because the first night i watched it i watched like three episodes in a row so that good. show is wild it is wild and my dumb ass was rooting for these idiots like yep. from the beginning but i have to say <laughs> i understand why the experts didn't pick him but actually that's the thing that i like the best about him so far so far is that he brought, brought his cat. cat to the yep. audition then he told me that when he was uh, little, he fantasized about killing his mother because she was too messy. I'm telling you, the story has everything. We are on a first date, my dude. Then he told me he was late because he was on the phone getting tips from his therapist. He then very awkwardly and robotically said, so tell me about your divorce. Are you bitter? And do you want to kill him too? I said, two. Two. <laughs> And he said, yes, because I want to kill and hurt him for hurting you. Oh, no. Uh, check, I don't please. like that check, at all. Check, please. That is V weird. Fucked up, dude. He talked. He told me I want to fucking kill my mother because she's messy. <laughs> oh, Ooh. no. I'm scared. I finished my beer as quickly as possible. I shit you not when I say that all happened within an hour and told him I was leaving. He how do you even outside. how do you even get all of that out in an hour? hour. That's, a, That's lot. a lot of ground to cover. It's mm. a lot. He walked me outside, had the audacity to try to kiss me. And when I declined, he grabbed me and said he was glad to meet me and that he couldn't wait to see me again because he could. He feels like I can keep him in line. <gasps> no, uh, no, I hate this. Imagine a man just grabbing you by the shoulders and saying, it's wonderful to meet you. No. <laughs> oh, my God. No. No, and especially imagine somebody that's like, I like you because you can be my babysitter. No, that's you, gross. my new mommy. No. that maybe I won't want to kill. <laughs> no, no, I hate that. I've never ghosted anyone in my life, but I feel like this is ghost worthy. Oh, I'd I would have ghosted him for that sure. My picker is broken, but there was literally zero indication of any of this via text. I was actually looking around for the cameras. So, um, she added later, edit, um. He at one point also mentioned that he had had a vasectomy because, quote, kids are human meth. Kids are human meth? I feel like they're the opposite of meth. Don't they make you really tired? Yeah, oh right? And meth makes you really, like, up? Right. Oh, my God. I, I, God. At human point, meth. He awkwardly touched my back and mumbled, you're you're wearing a bra. Oh. Very matter of fact. Oh. <laughs> he also said, I sent your pictures to all of my friends and they think you're hot. Did you send my pictures to all of your friends? I know I'm hot. So it's okay if you didn't. <laughs> what? Wow. In oh. the entire fuck. Dude, I am agape because I have pretty much <laughs> almost an exact similar story in that it's <gasps> just like the same theme. I love how like randomly we'll get a theme like oh. somebody giving way too much inappropriate information for a first out the gate. gate out the gate. Dude, nice to meet you. I thought about killing my mom. Uh, what? <laughs> no, that's not <laughs> what? Who would think that what, that's the Mendez brothers? You know happening? what? <laughs> like maybe it was actually a blessing that he was 20 minutes late because you had some time to get like that first drink mm. down, mm -hmm. you know, like numb yourself to what was about to happen to you. Wow. Right. And that's that's the thing, too. It's I feel bad because she says her her picker's broken or whatever. But that's not. But that's you, what she said. You, She's like, it's exactly. Not. It's that's not, not who he presented himself as. Yeah, exactly. You cannot get to know somebody over text. Mm -hmm. You cannot. So sometimes this is the why the podcast exists because uh, amen they don't reveal 
that kind of crazy Amen. until in person. Okay, so mine is also from Reddit. She says, I, a 23-year-old female, had a dinner date with a guy, 23-year-old male. You guys, get ready <laughs> to go on a date with oh, this 23-year-old no. oh, no. male. When I don't is the want last to. time? My son's 23, so. <laughs> no, I, look, I, I already told you guys, like, I... I uh, being in a college town, being back in Springfield Mm-mm. for a while, um, I, I've never felt older. Mm. I've never felt older and there is nothing in the world. And I'm not saying that there aren't mature 23 year olds. Like maybe there are. I'm sure that they exist. Um, age is Trump just... dance is fire, but uh, <laughs> I do not want to date somebody his age. Um, no. But yes, it's a mm. it's hard pass. Okay. So I matched with him on Hinge. We were ordering in and meeting at his place. Dumb, I know. (laughs) You're 23. (laughs) You're going to live forever. (laughs) When I walk into his apartment, I immediately notice he has hair, dirt, and dust all over the floor. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. It's a gorgeous two-story apartment, (laughs) but his towels are dirty. Mm -hmm. He has no toilet paper, and there are stains all over the toilet bowl. This this sounds like that episode of Sex and the City where Carrie (laughs) dates the guy. um, What's his name? The guy from... um, do, he was married to Fergie. Whatever. Yeah. Oh, Josh Demel. Yes. Yeah. She's dating him, and you know she's like in her late thirties, and he's supposed to be in his early twenties. And she's like, "It's so fun and exciting, mm. and we just make out all the time." And she wakes up in his apartment. Yes. And mm. that's what it's, it is. And he has to go find coffee filters to give to her because there's no toilet paper. No toilet paper. paper. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. Mm-mm. No. No. Spells broken. He apologizes for the mess and very casually notes that he never cleans. I Clearly. Tell him his place is small and wouldn't be too hard to vacuum, to which he quickly rebutted he would rather just pay for a cleaning service. Well, then do it. Then do, that. do it before I come over then. Yeah. No, I, it, why would you volunteer your place if it's if it's that messy? If I know someone is coming over, I mm. clean. Well, it's it's a respect thing, too. I think I think it's disrespectful. It is disrespectful, you know? disrespectful honestly. Don't disrespect me with your... <laughs> Dirt and body crumbs. <laughs> and hair. Come over. Oh, hair. Woof. Yeah. His phone rings and he answers a FaceTime call from his friends to tell him that to tell them he's for sure flying out to Atlanta tomorrow to join them for a week of strip clubbing. But as soon as he hangs up, he looks at me smirking and says, LOL, I'm totally not going. I'll tell them something from work came up. I work at Google. People just assume I'm busy. Is wow. that bad? Yeah, it is. It is bad, Like, dude. you're being really disrespectful of your friend's time, too. Yeah. Like, well. if, like if we planned a girl's trip, and then mm-hmm. I, last minute, was, like, <laughs> not going, and, Weird. like, lied to you about it? No. Yeah. Not okay. It's disrespectful to your friendship. <laughs> As we were waiting for our food to arrive, he starts washing dinner, uh, washing dishes for dinner with a dirty sponge. Oh. <laughs> I can smell that. I can smell oh, that God. sponge, oh, and yeah. it's no. gonna—it's it, going to be on your food. Oh, uh, oh God! Oh God! And then starts complaining about how ugly he thinks Drake's son is. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Random flex. He says it's a shame when an attractive parent has an ugly kid, wow. and that the same thing happened with Whitney Houston's daughter. Oh. Jesus. Christ. God damn, Who brings bro. this up on a first date? <laughs> also too soon, yo. It's too soon. Still. Again, he was stunned when I said they were all fine looking people, Oof. doubling down and insisting their kids were far uglier. <gasps> he then stopped scrubbing and asked, do you think you're attractive? What? <gasps> to which I respond that I care far more about character and truly don't think about people's look. He looks. He looked at me like I was full of shit. This led to his ranting about pretty privilege and how it was easier for me to make friends and get what I want in my oh career God. because I'm attractive. Okay, here's the thing. Whether or not that's true, why the fuck are you talking about it right now? On a first like, date. Uh, nice to meet you. Thought about killing my mom. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> pretty privilege. Pretty privilege. I'm like, oh, okay. Um, he quite literally says he doesn't have space in his life for people who aren't attractive and oh. that he hates unattractive people. The exception being those who are unattractive but incredibly smart. He said he could probably find space for a few people like this in uh, his oh, network. Oh, I could maybe make space. <laughs> what the actual I hate fuck? This guy. 
I try to keep my composure so he doesn't try to kill me or anything, but I <laughs> firmly note that I think there's incredible value in kindness and simply existing with a good heart. He seemed to dislike capitalism, so I suggest that basing people's value on their social status is inherently capitalist. It is. Yeah. He became flustered and retorted that kindness is a social construct. What? <laughs> what? Okay. Beauty is a social construct. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, my God. At this point, my vag is drier than the Sahara, and I start (laughs) recording the convo in case he tries anything. Oh, shit. When I pull out my phone, he asks if I'm bored and tries to change the topic by asking me about the South and how I managed to come out educated. (gasps) Wow. Whoa. Oh, my God. You can't do that. He said he has many stereotypes about the South that I don't seem to fit, except I seemed very conservative. Why? Why are you even... Okay. Even if you have these views, why the fuck? Like, what what, are you doing? Who raised you that this is the first thing that's coming out of your mouth with somebody you don't know? You don't know them like that. You can't just say that shit to them yet. Yeah. No. You you, you shouldn't ever. But, but like... Yeah, exactly. You don't know them right now. I don't I don't know like who's teaching these people how to how to date or giving them tips or, or but the, I mean if we can pass on any advice not an advice podcast right <laughs> but like still so, you know for first date it's like keep it light keep it, keep keep it, it fun it light, keep it moving wow. like no need to get into controversial topics about see this is why I like married at first sight because I do feel like these guys do give sound advice like on how to like relate to your partner I, I and, agree I mean and yeah. as far as like maybe you should leave it up to the experts so they're not pairing you with somebody who is completely <laughs> ideologically opposite of who you are right <laughs> you know they're like at least you know that on the basic level you guys have like the same stuff in common belief yeah. system you know <laughs> At this point, I suggest I should head out soon. He gets flustered and says, while he isn't going to pressure me to drink or wasn't trying to get me drunk, he thought it'd be funny if we drank a lot before I left. <laughs> no. No. What? I just what? thought it would be funny. I, I just thought I'm doing it for the hilarious. Lulz, you know? Yeah. I'm freaking out now and say I have to work in the morning and that drinking a lot will inevitably get me drunk. So no, I'm not interested. As I'm waiting for my car, he asked me how many dates I've been on since quarantine started, what qualities wow. I liked in guys, and why my last situationship didn't work out. All questions that you don't want to ask on a first date, right. I must say, you know? And especially not at the end of the first date. Like, if things had been going well, and they'd been having right. dinner, and, you know, they were connecting, then I'm like, some of those questions I feel like are are okay if they come up. But, like, clearly if you were she's- married at first sight, that would be okay. <laughs> But clearly she's not into you. No. She's no. leaving. She's leaving. She's out. When he realized I wasn't going to answer his questions, he tried going the route of opening up to see if I'd reciprocate, saying he'd been on four dates and had hooked up with an ex-girlfriend while in quarantine. I put on my mask to avoid a kiss. <laughs> Actually, Amen, girl. That is. There it is. There's Silver a lining. There's a tip for yeah. you. I like that. Yeah. And unmatched him on hinge while I rode back to my apartment. I told him I'd chat with him soon, but had no intention to. I lied partially for my safety, and truthfully, I also thought it would be nice to give him a taste of his own medicine. Bye, boy. Bye, Bye -bye. boy. Exactly. Ooh. Okay. So this one is um, in our email. Somebody wrote this into us. Nice. Uh, It says, hey, friends, I'm back with another story. Yes. (laughs) This one is somewhat of a shamer seat and something my best friend still laughs at me about any time the topic comes up. To set the scene, me, a 20-year-old female, was on Tinder sleuthing for a hookup when I came across this super hot guy. We'll call him Mark. He was hot. 23, muscular, tattoos, good haircut, nice beard. Okay. Mm-hmm. In so far. Uh, it, yeah, right now, in like Flynn. Um, 23-year-old But male. she's 20. I'm, but she's 20. I, I know, but I'm already, I'm just like... <laughs> no, it's a problem. No, at 42-year-old me would be like gross. But 20-year-old, 20-year-old me, me would have been... like, hey, yeah. perfect. Mm-hmm. I know, it's it's just, it, we're telling all these stories about 23-year-old guys, and I'm like... <laughs> no, it's, it's... It's it's bringing back like <laughs> floods of memories. Mm-hmm. You know? Dating PTSD for sure, yeah. Exactly. Um. He looked like the type of guy who could... <laughs> 
this is funny. I forgot that they said this. He looked like the type of guy who could pick you up and shove you against a wall when oh. you're fucking. Oh. Chris goddamn Cuomo up in here. Yeah, sure. Chris Cuomo, 23-year-old Chris, Chris Cuomo. Um, and after stalking his Instagram, I could see he was busy in the gym and even had a nice butt. I love a nice booty on my men. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's why I like watching football. <laughs> <laughs> After some talking, both normal and flirty, and several lewd pictures, I knew I wanted to hook up with him. The plan was I was just going to drive there, get some dick, and then leave before the sun came up. <laughs> hey, I like a girl with a plan. Mm-hmm, that's right. So the night of, I drive over to his house, send my bestie my location, smart girl, mm-hmm. and walk up to the front door. We went up to his bedroom and thank Things immediately got hot and heavy. We had been talking for like three weeks, so the sexual tension had built, and within minutes, we were on Mm. his bed. Mm -hmm. I hear that. Mm -hmm. As we were making out, this made me laugh. This is such a 23-year-old guy. As we were making out, he says, stop, and I did immediately and asked what was wrong. The office was playing in the background, and it was the CPR episode. (laughs) This episode is my favorite. Let's watch it really quick. (laughs) Oh, my God. Mid-make out. Like, you're about to hook up with somebody, and they're like, pause. We have to watch The Office. (laughs) An episode. Okay. Okay. Can I tell you how my ego would feel if somebody did that? That's right. Done. I'm actually An episode of a television show. That you can watch anytime. That you've seen before. Anytime that you've seen before is more important than getting in my pants. Like, go, f- oh, goodbye. And a 23-year-old man whose hormones should be, like, through the roof. Off the charts. Like, a what, a how? How? Like, I don't, okay, but all right. Um, I was confused, but maybe he just had some nerves. So I brushed it off and laid back down on his twin-sized mattress. Oh, you mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> This tracks. As I began to look around, it looked like he hadn't updated his decor since he was eight. Again, weird, but I thought nothing of it. We continue. I wonder what that looks like. Like, what is it? Are you on a race car bed? Oh. Like, <laughs> I don't want to fuck you on Star Wars sheets. No. Uh, as we continue to watch the show, and uh, we continue to watch the show, and pretty soon I was touching him through his thin jogger sweat pla- sweatpants. <laughs> well, you just tempting us with them pants. I do mm-hmm. love a sweatpants. I mean, if you didn't want to get laid, why'd you wear those pants? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, let me tell you, I could feel it through his pants that his dick was like a handful of Olive Garden breadsticks. Boy. <gasps> oh. Thick, long, and I knew I wanted it endlessly. Oh, wow. Shit. Oh, my Damn. God. He's got breadstick dick. <laughs> breadstick dick. Oh, oh my God. I'm going to cry. Um, at this point, all clothes are off and I get on top. I cannot stress enough how massive his penis was. We oh. had to use lube. Woof. And things were going oh. great, right until they weren't. He flipped me over into doggy and started really going at it. Oh, no. He was <laughs> jackhammering, but like oh. in a good way. And I was definitely relaxed and into it. My lung and- felt that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not very tall. I know. Short torso. <laughs> Short torso. <laughs> Short torso. Oh, my God. I didn't sign up for a tonsillectomy. <laughs> God. I had my tonsils. Oh, God. <laughs> Mm. And that's when it started. Pa 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 pa. <gasps> the queefs shot out of me because of all the lubrication, <laughs> yes! dick in the air. Yes. Oh. oh my god. Do you remember how embarrassing queefs were yes. when you were twenty? Yes, yes, yes. Do you remember? Oh God. Yes. Now I'm like. Now I'm like. I'll <laughs> own it. You know what I mean? I'm like the queef means the pussy is juicy. <laughs> the queef means the pussy's all right. <laughs> is this our best episode ever <laughs> but when i was 20 mortifying weef was oh. the end for me Fucking mm-hmm. kill me yeah mm-hmm. kill me oh i want to die right now and move <laughs> my pussy sounded like a motorcycle exhaust <laughs> <laughs> Or a machine gun. I was mortified. Oh, my God. Oh, God. He kept going. But after 30 seconds of nonstop queefing, I literally 
threw myself on the floor, <laughs> sliding out from underneath him. I didn't say a word. I threw I threw my clothes on <gasps> in a rush, shirt inside out and pants unzipped and made a dash for the door. Oh, no. I didn't even say goodbye or a single word to him. I just literally ran out of the house <laughs> oh, as no. fast as I could. <laughs> I got in my car, called my best friend, and told her everything that had happened. I told her about the frontal flatulence and how <laughs> it had never happened to me before. Oh, it's her first time. Oh, oh honey. God. <laughs> oh, my God. I told her about the echoing sound. Like the little drummer boy, she asked. Oh, yes. <laughs> I responded. <laughs> the little drummer boy. <laughs> and that's the title of this episode. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and we laughed and met up for drinks after. That guy still tried to fuck me for weeks after, but I couldn't forget the ghost of Queef's past. Oh, no. I don't know if y'all will find this funny. (laughs) Oh, my God, girl. Are you kidding me? (laughs) And uh, it's okay if you don't want to share it, but every time I think about it, I die. I hadn't queefed before, and I haven't queefed after it, but I'll be damned if if it wasn't going out with a bang. Um, Anyways, love the pod. Love the Patreon. I hope y'all are hanging in there during these trying times, TM, and have a good one. Love, oh, T. My <laughs> oh, God. my God. Oh, Woo. I mean, for it to be your first time, I understand, mm-hmm, like, it, and if it's, like, no, if you I'm can't not, make it I'm stop. I'm 42 years old, and I still think that that would probably got me shook. I, would, I don't know if I'd have run out. I probably wouldn't have run I out. I would have And I probably would have still hooked up with him later yeah. once, like, the, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. had subsided. Yeah. But, um, but definitely I would have been really... No, it only happens with like with a lot of of lube or like if you're really Air. turned if you're on and in if and you're out. coming, you know, coming like with hot. with a breadstick dick, then <laughs> you know chances are it's gonna it's gonna happen. Mm-hmm. You're Yoinks. moving air around in there. I'm really excited to talk about the story. Oh crap, Chuck got in. Sorry, I saw him come in. I didn't stop him or anything. Okay, well we'll let him hang until he gets wily coyote. We call him Wild Man Leather and Lace, which is a very Columbus, That's a, Ohio. Quite a long. Well, there was a place called Wild Man Leather and Lace in, <laughs> in Columbus. Columbus. I'm sorry. What the fuck? And, what, um, wait, what is it? <laughs> it is like exactly what you think. Like a leather shop. Yeah. And yeah. lace. And lace. <laughs> Wild Man's Leather and Lace. I feel like they couldn't decide on a name. And so that they, they chose two. Yeah, like the husband much. wanted Wild Man and the wife wanted Leather and Lace. And they're like, let's just do both. Why not both? Yeah, why not both? We also... I, I feel like this is only a Columbus thing, too. Uh, water beds and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and stuff. What is the stuff? Head and puff shop. And, puff and mostly. stuff. Mostly. Do you remember puff and stuff? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Both head shops. Uh, All right. Uh, so. <clears throat> prepare yourselves. <laughs> I'm ready. Brittany Murphy. <gasps> oh, my God. Yes. Was oh. born. Oh, my God. Yes. Shit. This was on my list, but I was like, it's too much. It's there's so much. It's, okay. Okay. I'm excited. Was born November 1977 to Sharon Murphy and Angelo Bertol- Bertol- Bertolotti. I got most of my information from Brittany Murphy and ID Mystery and the final days of Brittany Murphy, an article written for The Hollywood Reporter by Alex Ben Block. I got a little bit from, you know, Wikipedia too, just filling in a couple blanks, but this is her story. Nice. So you guys know Brittany Murphy. Oh, yes. She yes. was um, born in Atlanta, but uh, shortly after she was born, she was about two years old when her parents split apart um her dad moved to florida and her mom moved them to edison new jersey she feels like a jersey girl Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. i mean it fits um they realized that she kind of had a spark for talent really early on and she had like kind of a flair to her just and she did she was magnetic if you i mean if you guys can remember Mm -hmm. i mean i was a big britney murphy fan but she really really soared to fame with clueless i mean that's when she kind of hit her like people were like put her it put her on the map she for sure had a quality yeah like you can see it in even if it's a movie that's like okay this isn't a cinematic masterpiece she is still magnetic in it yeah you know there's something about her and on the ID um, thing, they talk about too, like, you know, after the success of Clueless, she still wasn't getting kind of the bigger roles. And so she col- she colored her hair blonde and started picking up all the roles mm-hmm. and got, you know, Eight Mile. She got, you know, a lot of really big, big time hits on on her plate. And, you know, and then she, she was of, like the it girl for she it, really what, was. like 2005 or something yeah, like, like she was like 2000. Mm-hmm. She really was. Yeah. 
it. And she's beautiful, honestly. The funny thing is, is that I really think she's better looking with dark hair, but it really did turn her career around, which was hilarious. Well, to something me. about the early 2000s, blonde True. was like, yeah, it was in, like the, in, in. the Sarah Michelle Geller mm-hmm. thing. Everyone was blonde. It was like Jessica Simpson, Britney Spears, like everybody mm-hmm. that like very blonde, lots of highlights. You know, yeah. that was just what well, was it? What, what what it was? And it was kind of the opposite too, because it wasn't just her typical blonde hair, blue eyes. It's blonde hair with brown eyes. Mm-hmm. So it kind of also gave her a quote unquote exotic look, you mm-hmm. know, which is very different, not your typical, you know. So she was she was the it girl, like you said. Like she really was. She was picking up scene. She was notoriously known for dating some of her co stars. Mm-hmm. She dated Ashton Kutcher for a while. She dated she dated Eminem. Mm-hmm. For a short period of time as well. And Showman says, I get it. Yeah, she she came out of a lot of, you know, these, you know, shows or these movies with relationships, but nothing really that had, you know, really hit or struck a chord. So then she meets Simon Monjack, who is considerably older than her, like eight years older than her. I remember people being very confused, too, because yeah. it's not like he I mean, to go from like Ashton Kutcher, who at the time was an it boy very right. good looking like used to be a male model to this guy who right. no one had heard of who was significantly older than her who was i mean not not a male model no, <laughs> no. you know not even close like but i think that what she felt with him was like he's a bigger guy he's you know significantly taller significantly larger than her he felt some security some comfort and i think that you know for her she'd just been living it was her and her mom for you know almost her entirely her entire life right so she really didn't have like a protector and a male figure her dad was a bit of a shit right her dad was highly involved in like um the mafia and in in you know drugs and lots of scandal had been in prison so there was a lot you know that i think that maybe that she felt simon brought to the table for her he's this kind of big gregarious guy who has a british accent you know which never hurts. No. Mm-hmm. You know. It sure doesn't. In fact, it makes up for a plethora of sins. It really, it? truly does. <laughs> and so, you know, it was a it was an odd couple, but I think everybody kind of, you know, I I don't know that anybody ever from anything I read or saw understood the relationship, but I think as an outsider looking in and just kind of looking at her past and understanding where she came from, I do kind of feel like I can I can grasp maybe what drew her to this person who might look to her in her mind as a protector, you know. But on December 9th, 2009, 911 gets a call from Sharon, uh, Sharon Murphy uh, in the Hollywood Hills that there is, you know, somebody is you know, dying basically on the floor of their bathroom. Like, please come help. My daughter's dying. She's not breathing. Um, Sharon Murphy is Brittany Murphy's mother. And Brittany and Sharon were both living with Simon together in this Hollywood Hills mansion. And by all accounts, it sounds as though on the 911 call that Sharon's there by herself. And then you hear enter her husband who then starts to try CPR on her. So it's all very like coming down to like, this is very odd. We don't know what's going on. The, the uh, EMTs arrive. She's barely got a very weak pulse at the time. And they take her to Cedar Sinai where she eventually does is confirmed dead. I remember this being so shocking. Like Mm -hmm. I I, I feel like there was a string of celebrity deaths, like young celebrities dying. You know, it was like Amy Winehouse, Heath Ledger. Like there was just so many that were like happening back to back. It did feel like back to back. Yeah. yeah, In this same, like whatever, a couple of years of, of time. And like, I remember hearing about this and just being so everyone being so baffled. Yeah. (laughs) Right. Well, cause it's, she's a young Hollywood starlet. She's, you know, fresh, face like i mean and she's still you know she wasn't the it girl at the time of her death but she still had a promising Relevant, career for sure. ahead of her yeah. like she definitely could have been the likes of somebody who had like a, an ongoing career like an angelina jolie or mm-hmm. a, like anybody of like a with a long lasting career as a starlet mm-hmm. you know so it was very it was very shocking and so you know Right away, you know, they start an investigation because they're like, this is really bizarre. Like, she's young. She's 32 years old. 
how does a young, seemingly healthy 32 year old just die? And so, you know, they start the investigation within two hours of her death. They start to interview Simon and her mother and find out like kind of what what was the story, what's happening. She had been sick for multiple days. She'd had a cough. She'd been just, you know, increasingly sicker and sicker. And they had, you know, not wanted to go to the doctors because it just wasn't she's not a doctor visitor. But she eventually was like they had set up an appointment for her. Like literally, I think like the next day she was supposed to go to the doctors. And so oh, that's a cautionary tale for you and I, Christina. Yeah, I know that we're that way. Yeah. We're like, I, I put it off. I put it off. Sure. I put it off. I put it off. Yeah. So they um, as they're like checking out, you know, like the scene and everything, um, you know, Simon's behavior is super erratic. He's acting very strange, which, you know, here or here or there, like, honestly, you, you just don't know how people are going to behave when I, I I've told you guys before my behavior when shit gets weird is fucking bizarre like mm-hmm. I'm like what am I even saying like I yeah stop I mean talking immediately as much as sooner. I like to watch true crime and analyze the <laughs> yeah. way that people respond which we all do that we yeah. all do it and sometimes you're like no nah, that looks off 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 but at the same time like what do I really want someone to be analyzing me that closely when the worst thing on the worst day of my life right right you oh know? for sure uh, but here's the biggest red flag that they notice. There are upward of 90 prescription medications in her husband Simon's name. How as does well one get that many? Like 90. I don't even know how that happens. Like on his side of the bed, plus then on her side of the bed, there's prescriptions in her name and his name as well. So this is early in the investigation and they're like, wait, the fuck? Like, yeah. w- what's happening you here? You cannot fuck around with prescription well, with, meds. with drugs in general but prescription True. drugs just because a doctor gives them to you does not mean they're safe so here's my question you guys when you think back on britney murphy just in general how did she die how, do you remember like i knew what was it was the something to do with pills is what i i i thought, thought. it was an overdose yeah okay so I did too. And that's the thing that I always thought was like, oh, she overdosed on prescription meds, especially because I think that we'd all heard about the high amount mm-hmm. of prescription meds in the home, all that. And I think that we heard all of that before we even heard about the autopsy. Well, And there had been rumors before she died about right. her behavior being really weird. <laughs> yes. and Things like that. There was. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. And as much as she loved, you know, Simon. The rumors around town were that he was kind mm-hmm. of a piece of shit, yeah. that he was very isolating, that he was very controlling, that their relationship was, you know, maybe fine for them, but it was erratic for everybody else. And so, mm-hmm. like, there were rumors about her taking prescription meds, rumors about, like, crack smoking. Oh, I remember that one. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Because she also lost a lot of weight she right before this, right? Like, weight. she was, like, yeah. super thin and she was acting kind of, like, a little wild and crazy on red carpets, if I remember correctly. Yeah. No, and yeah. there was a lot of, like, really erratic behaviors and things that were very sketchy. And so I, I think all of us, and even myself, I was like, oh, yeah, she died, died of a drug overdose. Like, that's well, mm-hmm. And especially Always since, what I thought. again, there were a lot of young people dying that's right. around this time. And it was almost all drugs. Yeah, you know, heroin, like, whatever. Yeah, yeah. You name it. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> yep. But the autopsy comes back. Ed Winter, who is, by the way, like the autopsy to the stars, uh, Mr. Ed Winter, who is like the coroner here in Los Angeles, assistant coroner, whatever. Only in Los he, Angeles would I that know. be a thing where it's like, I know. coroner to the stars. <laughs> I, know. I know. Well, and he has, he's done Whitney Houston. He did Michael Jackson. He did Brittany Murphy. And he was interviewed on the show, too, about the autopsy. And the autopsy results that came back, which I feel like no one really caught or heard or just overlooked was that she actually died of pneumonia um and she had a high amount of over the counter like per, like medication in her system which was conclu- which was um consistent with uh, being sick all the things that she'd been going through like per, you know over the counter medication mm-hmm. and a high a really like low and anemic Rate. And now, she was, now that you say that, I'm yeah. like, yes, okay, I remember that vaguely. But I, I feel like it was. I feel like they said pneumonia, but yeah. everyone was kind of like, mm, but it's a pneumo- a drug. pneumonia yeah. with a drug overdose, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. And so, but they said there were no le- illegal medications detected in her system at all. So, mm-hmm. you know, at that time, they just simply were like, and and Ed Winter himself was just like, this is just a really sad case that if she had just simply been taken to the doctor. 
and, you know, dealt with the pneumonia that she was dealing with and, and being sick, this could have saved her life. Just literally going to the doctors could have saved her life. And she literally was going to go to the doctor. And so it's just a sad, in, in all aspects, everybody's looking at it's just a sad case of like, you know, this is something that just was real. It feels almost accidental mm-hmm. in that way. Um, but, you know, of course, there's, you know, it doesn't end there because, of course, you have fucking Sharon and Simon who are like, you know, now in the limelight for some un God knows why reason, because I think everybody thought it was suspicious. Well, I think everyone had suspicions about Simon already yes. because they were, I mean, right off the bat, I mean, you look at Brittany Murphy, you look at him, people are already like, That's right. eh. and then there were rumors about the way that he treated her and then mm-hmm. her behavior. Right. I think everyone was just suspicious of him immediately because of those things. And then to hear that like, oh, he had this many prescription drugs in the house. Right. That's an issue. And then I remember there being a lot of talk about her mom being like an opportunist. Right. Yeah. So, and we'll get into that because that's really where the story takes a turn, right? If it had just ended maybe the way it ended, it might've just ended in Hollywood rumor and just suspect or whatever. But, but really the autopsy is just showing this is what it is. Right. But They go on fucking Larry King. And this is the other thing. So when they were first interviewing him, he's like, I don't want an autopsy. Like, don't autopsy her. And so right away, they're like, suspicious. We're 100 fucking percent going to autopsy this bitch. Like, especially now. You know what I mean? Like, we're definitely doing If you do not want to draw attention to yourself, never say, I don't want an autopsy. Well, he and and her mom are on fucking Larry King. Like, yeah, he's like, I just didn't want to ruin her beautiful curvy body. Like, (gasps) fuck. (laughs) That's why you didn't want an autopsy? Well... If that were actually true, <laughs> when she was coughing and sick, maybe you would have taken her to the doctor. Because you know what? Pneumonia and death ruined her beautiful, curvy body. Okay. And I'm just... Ugh. But also, like, how are you so clueless that you got on national television and said this shit? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then, not only does it end there, then he invites Radar Online to come take a tour of the death house. And there's videos showing him. He's walking around smoking a cigar. It feels so super fucking nonchalant. Like, he's just kind of taking anybody on a tour of the house. Like, that, he's just like... Trash. It's like, it was like if Cribs, like you know cribs for like death house and it was just like he's just smoking a cigar taking him through the through taking them through the home the scene taking him through the bathroom oh and talking like oh my wife you can see she had a lot of you know beauty products and it's just it's so tacky and so tasteless that i mean and again like i don't want to say like again you don't want to judge the way that people respond but this is a really really yeah fucked up response to have like i I, it's just so callous and gross it is i I would never do that to someone who i loved i don't understand i don't want to talk to anybody let alone invite fucking media into my home and not like that not like that like that i don't know and just the way he's acting on video and of course they're filming it right so you know he's being filmed smoking a cigar could there any anything come off more callous and uncaring than than that behavior? Like to just your wife just died. And how do Someone you not you know? You like loved. bare minimum, how do you not know how that reads? Right. That's like, exactly right. I, I think that that's so strange. Even if you're like, yeah, this is where I'm at. You have to know that people are coming in with cameras and like at bare minimum know what that looks like. Oh, at least pretend to be sad. I mean, it would just the behavior is so uh, uncaring feeling. It's just so off the charts. So suspicion continues to mount. And just five months later, though, they get another 911 call to the same home. Simon Monjack is dead. Whoa. And the call comes from Sharon. <laughs> Look at Christina's face. I, I wish we I were recording this. this. Like, you you're didn't like, know this Ooh. part. Okay. <laughs> so Sharon calls 911. The funny thing is, is that you you have context to the 911 calls too. So the 911 call that comes in with Brittany, she's visibly, or not visibly, obviously, like audibly upset, crying, like verklempt, like, uh, like very, very upset. The, the other call is kind of like, yeah, he's not breathing. Oh, he's, no. It's very, um, she, they were like, get him on the floor. She's like, she's like, he's like 300 pounds. I can't like, it's just very like, Damn. 
very cold um, blooded. <laughs> cold blooded. I know. I don't exactly. Okay. So EMT show up. Simon's dead. Autopsy returns once again. They find multiple prescriptions in Simon's name but at his bedside. And on the other side of the bed, they find prescription meds in the name of Sh- Sharon Monjack. <gasps> oh, no. Right. Oh, I'm uncomfy. Oh, no. Yeah. Sharon, who'd only nine months before called 911 for her daughter, is now telling Ed Winter, the coroner, and the police that Simon died of a broken heart. Mm. Mm-hmm. 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 You know, the very common um, disease, broken heart. Um, <laughs> for for a yep. dating podcast, so all of us are like, like um, I'm also trying to put together, like, did she end up mar- Sharon Monjack? Not that anybody can prove or but there's not been there anything, prescriptions? but there's prescriptions under the name Sharon Monjack. There's prescription names under another guy's name there as well, but majority of course are under Simon. Okay, can we also can all of these doctors just do not pass go go to jail immediately. Yeah. Like if why why yeah, legal drug dealers, man. Uh, it's exactly right. Well, Simon did not die <laughs> of a broken heart. You don't say. <laughs> I know. Heaven forbid. You can't can't believe it, can you? But the autopsy does conclude that the same cause of death. He has had pneumonia and anemia. So is there some kind of medication you can give someone that gives them? Okay. You just winked at me. So, um, so here's the thing, guys, anemia almost, it it made sense with Brittany. She'd kind of dealt with anemia her whole life. She had reportedly had incredibly bad periods, which Mm -hmm. caused her to be almost in a constant state of at least some mild form of anemia, her getting sick, all those things that kind of almost registered. It all started to kind of add up to yeah, okay, this tracks. Anemia will make you much sicker. You're not going to be able to fight off diseases as well. All these things are starting to track. But you also now have a 300-pound man who is this huge beast of a man, presumably healthy, right? who also just died of pneumonia and anemia. anemia. Yeah. It's very, very suspect. Sus. It's very sus. <laughs> so <laughs> Brittany's father is like, I'm not convinced that this cause of death is just a basic anemia pneumonia situation. So he reaches out to a Dr. Cyril Wecht who um, for some answers, this doctor is a a forensic psychologist or forensic. um, Yep. Pathologist. Thank Mm -hmm. you. Sorry. Words. Um, A forensic pathologist. And so he right away, he feels that this is this manner of death is super suspicious as well um, for someone in her position. Because the other part of this is, too, is like she's, she's seemingly wealthy. They have money. There's no reason for her to not go to a doctor. You know, sure. You know, maybe they were kind of on a more naturopath way or whatever. But it just doesn't make sense why she wouldn't go to the doctor. There's just so many things that don't add up unless somebody was just saying, no, you're fine. You're fine. Walk it off. Kind of. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Yeah, which oh, could totally been happening. Yeah, for <laughs> yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, he also had recently been doing a lot of research and found a link between acute anemia death were often connected with arsenic poisoning. <gasps> oh, shit. Mm-hmm. During her autopsy, she was never tested for, for toxins at all. So they were finally able to obtain a sample of her a hair sample of hers and sent it to an independent lab. The lab results are shocking. They show that she has 10 heavy metals at an extremely high rate, like rates that by the WHO World Health Organization are off the charts. Basically. Okay, I have a question. I don't know if you know the answer to this. Was there a prenup in that marriage between Brittany Murphy and I've, Simon Monjack? From what is reported and what i've seen through the episodes all her money actually ends up going to sharon her mom well well and i guess maybe after his death i mean i'm assuming i guess it goes probably to simon as her husband right but sharon was living with them but i mean okay because how much longer are you gonna have your mummy yeah yeah, that's right well and that was also something that was brought up in the show like there were some talks about like they had been talking about moving to new york just just Brittany and Simon and that would have ousted Sharon there is a lot of suspicion here but um, the lab results just show these high toxin levels but it doesn't 
they don't aren't able to even test truly um, any of the like like for arsenic or poisoning or anything like that without doing further investigation. And what they really need is an exhumation of Brittany's body. But Sharon's like, nah, you don't say. <laughs> yeah. She's like, eh, no, thank you. Nah, I we're not doing it. And there's not really technically enough. And even though Brittany's father, Angelo, insists that Sharon actually poisoned Brittany and then Simon to cover her tracks. So Brittany's father this whole time, who it's hard to like give him much credit. I mean, the guy's not really even been part of their lives, you know, so it's like right. some dude, you know, yeah. at this point saying it. But he's like, this but is, it is so suspicious. Su- it's so yeah. suspicious. Yes. And the only one who comes out on top is... Sharon. Sharon. Yeah. Right. So while Sharon claims that Angelo basically is just trying to obtain Brittany's wealth um, and Ed Winters fully stands behind his autopsy, of course he does, because what's he going to be like? Oh, you know what? Fucked up. Actually. (laughs) Yeah. Um, My mistake. (laughs) He feels like there's not really any evidence to um, prove to the otherwise. And I mean, this is all speculation and nobody is going to be able to pull up Brittany's body without Sharon's consent because that's who's been left really in charge of her and her estate and all of the stuff. So there's no way to prove it. The other thing that keeps coming up though, is that Sharon insists that there was mold in the house, black mold. And that that's why she, she's pretty certain that they were got pneumonia because of the black mold in the house. Got a question though, which they do assume they do find. And there's some, some tracking a little bit about this. But I'm sorry. Sharon's the oldest old. bitch in the house. Yeah, I'm like, you what? Like the two youngest people in the house right. got pneumonia and died, but uh-huh. you're fine. Like perfectly yeah. healthy. So, and you're like, what, 65 at least? At least. So they didn't do the testing on Brittany, but are they going to do it on dude face? They haven't brought that up. And that isn't something. And her, her mom was, his mom was um, interviewed on the show too. And I don't know if she just doesn't, think that that's a possibility but the only one really who was advocate advert advocating for this possibility of death um not being a broken heart was uh britney's father and britney's father that's just fucking passed away bizarre like wow. last year so and he ran out of money to even fight it at that point too so it's just been you know speculation and rumor and this is something that you know, I think because, of course, Britney's fame, because, you know, of who she was, this will probably be something unless they do at some point an autopsy, another autopsy, do another, you know, you know, exhumation yeah, had, of the body. I have heard just, of the suspicion. Right. Like I said, I, I, wow. I think everybody initially assumed it was Simon. Yeah. But yes. then when Simon ends up dead, only five months later. Well, I mean, Simon could have killed Brittany and then Sharon could have killed Simon. Absolutely. <laughs> that could have happened too, you know? Right. I mean, so much speculation around the thing, you know, around the whole the whole scenario. And I think, you know, losing somebody young at 32, when you look at, you know, and she's famous, she's a star, you know what I mean? Yeah, beautiful, mm-hmm. so full of promise and right. all that. And to see, I mean, just the initial speculation, which I think we all were aware of, which is that we all assumed Simon was involved. Mm -hmm. But then again, like I said, five months later for him to die of the same thing, it just throws such a wrench. Yeah. Also, if she she had been coughing and not feeling well, and they knew she died of of pneumonia, when you started coughing, you're not going to go to the fucking doctor? Mm -hmm. And also, again brings me back to what if you have somebody in your ear who's being like oh it's just cold you'll be fine you'll be fine you'll be fine yeah. I, I don't know if my if my wife died five months ago i'd go to the doctor go to i the mean fucking and, doctor. and you the, know again we are not the doctor going type and like if no. if my spouse died and then i start coughing yeah. i'm going to the doctor the other yeah. weird thing too is that sharon immediately when they found when they came the emts came and everybody came for the scene when simon died they she had confessed that they were sleeping in the same bed together <gasps> oh there we really go weird. that's that fucking is not normal weird. But they, i don't give a fuck they weren't together they okay. were just consoling each no, other no what that's not normal that is not fucking normal no. at all and i'm sorry if you have somebody that's sick sleeping in bed next to you how come you're not sick again 
that it just takes me back right. to you're the oldest bitch what? in the house. Also, why the fuck did she come out with that? Like, honey, you bury that deep down. You don't well, tell anyone. I mean, she had her Sharon Monjack prescriptions right beside her. That I mean, is so fucking weird. That's, that's so the weird. Part of the story. Absolutely not. Oh God, I'm so grossed out by that. I know. Shivers. I feel like it's one of those to me in my mind. It feels very unsolved mysteries. It but it feels very much like mommy had a little bit of wanting to live precarious life. 100, 100. And it feels like she took over Brittany's life. Mm-hmm. It does it have feels smacks of that. Really mommy dearesty to me. I don't it's like so- it at all. Ooh. Oh God, that left me with gross feelings. Mm. <laughs> yeah sorry guys oh, no good 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 one though like yeah. it's, it's just such an interesting story and i i mean it it it's it's a little different than our typical crazy in love you know somebody killed somebody over it's love, a but mystery it's, but it is definitely a mystery yeah. and i feel like i think again you know when you look at somebody if this was maybe anybody else i don't know that we would have this conversation mm-hmm. i think we should but because of the fame, because of her... We'd be having this conversation if they made a dateline about it. But otherwise, right. we wouldn't be having For this sure. conversation. Yeah. yeah. But it's all very suspect. It's, it's weird. It's all very bizarre. It's It, it just screams I'm a sorry. scandal. I'm sorry. It would be weird if it was like you were living with a roommate and then you died and then your roommate was sleeping in the same room, bed as your, okay. as but, your husband. But your mother. mother. Yeah. But your mom... Could you imagine your mom in bed with your? No, I can't. I w- now I have to go scrub my brain. Out. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Thank you. Oh my god. I'm gonna. <laughs> that is. Oh no. Whoa! Oh, what no. a mental image. It's no. horrible. Oh, it's. Uh, well, awful. now I'm uncomfy. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm so glad that. Uh, anyway. <laughs> um, but you know what? Here's the thing. I and I think that uh, it, at the end of this, what I want to say about this story is that I. Brittany Murphy did some crazy things. I think what we've all been left with is this image of when I asked you guys and why I asked you guys, do you remember how Brittany died? I think that we all have this image or this memory of her dying of a drug overdose that she somehow fucked up her life. She got with a shitty guy and went down a downward spiral. And when it really comes out, when you really read the facts of the story, it's not that at all. And so it's hard. I think that we, we as people, as humans buy into whatever the first inkling of a story we hear. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, things like Facebook and Instagram and all these, you know, social media things and, you know, rumors and people saying, you know, passing a story via telephone, right? That's what we play every day is telephone with these stories. And, and when it, when it really comes down to it, we all three, initially thought Brittany Mur- Murphy died of a drug well, overdose. And especially at that time, I think it's kind of hard to explain because it was 11 years ago. A great, but, yeah. but the 2000s, like the early aughts were a very specific moment in time. Mm-hmm. And I feel like the way that we treated like the paparazzi culture mm. and like the celebrity culture and mm-hmm. the way that we treated specifically young women in in the limelight in that time, we were always looking for a scandal. I mean, Brittany yeah. had her meltdown two years earlier. Right. Yeah. And like, I feel like we were constantly looking for that. You see it when you watch the Amy Winehouse documentary, right? Yeah. Like you were, we're constantly looking for a reason to blame them or to say that they're not as perfect. Right. We're yeah. looking for the flaws. We're looking for the cracks. And so uh, when that stuff came out, we were already like this guy, her mm-hmm. husband, right? And then the stuff came out about all the prescription meds. It was easy for us all to jump on that bandwagon. Sure. Mm-hmm. Put two and two together mm-hmm. in our own minds mm-hmm. and make up a conclusion. Yeah. You know, and uh, you know, it's 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 all very sad. It's sad loss. You know, I think that she could have been something and she could have, you know, been successful still. Probably. She today. strikes me as the type of person who would have really grown into her own like she would have surprised us yeah with some really like poignant serious like Lindsay Lohan's work. going to mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay no but like but you know like like an Amy Adams right yeah. where like all of a sudden she does something and we're like wow actually like yeah yeah because I think she had the potential to be one of those like incredibly powerful actresses yeah actually you know I agree I think she had a really dynamic personality and, you know, just, you know, she could have surprised us cut yeah. too soon. But um, yeah, I think it's important. You know, we're not all going to do all the research. And I think at the end of the day, nobody cares enough to do all the research involved in like digging down into the, all the reasons why, 
it, it, it is sad. It's a sad story, but it is surrounded with a shroud of absolute mystery at this mm-hmm. point to me still. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Especially when you consider Sharon Monjack. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> Good story. <sighs> Ugh, what are you guys watching this week? <clears throat> Besides, I'm going to spit out my champagne. <laughs> <laughs> Besides the map show. Oh my God. So um, I told you guys my routine was to um, to stay up really late watching maps and then <laughs> take a couple hours nap and then my anxiety would wake me up around 2.33 and um, I would s- doom scroll on my phone while having putting the TV on in the bedroom. And I found the craziest show oh. on Netflix. Oh, oh no. it's do very share. random. But something that calms my anxiety is like HGTV. Oh, I, God, fixer yeah. upper shows. Oh, mm. I love those. I love those. So there's one on Netflix that's called like Amazing Interiors or something. Oh, yes. And it's it's like the houses look normal from the inside, but then or, or from, from the, outside? the outside. And then you go inside and they're fucking bananas. What? <laughs> like the people on the show are brilliant this one guy had like he had his dad his father-in-law buy a home for him and his wife and a couple of kids and then he turned the basement into a sci-fi museum oh <laughs> his father-in-law's like <laughs> it's just like it's random <laughs> shit like oh, that oh my god where you're like oh no honey and it's so imagine that oh. father-in-law is just like Christ Almighty. Oh yeah, He's like, yeah. my wife could have married anybody, <laughs> and she married this, this guy. Piece of shit. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but no, and it's it's all kinds of crazy stuff like that. Like this wife, like has uh, a husband who turned their entire basement into like Wrigley Stadium. <laughs> pretty much, it's like what, this for giant. Why? <laughs> <Yeah. Exactly. laughs> Why? Oh. But yeah, so that was my distraction this week. Was was Jesus. that show? Jesus. Um. I mean, I you know, I watched. I've started. Yes. Um. I've started Married at First Sight, which I kind of want to just fast forward so to the end to see who stays. I skipped a couple episodes. I'm not Be- gonna lie. Because here's the thing about that show: it is good, but like there isn't. A- uh, you know how I feel about like secondhand embarrassment and secondhand yep. awkwardness. And there is a level of that, of course, because it's two strangers who are basically trying to like figure it out. And um, it's it, it, it's awkward. Mm-hmm. Like it's compelling and also very awkward. But I want to see if they stay together. So we'll see how that goes. But I did watch Haunting of Bly Manor. Mm-hmm. Finished it. Watched the whole thing. I like it. Yeah. I liked it too. Okay. I, 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 it is not as, it's not scary. It's not scary. And like, I, I guess I understand people who watched Haunting of Hill House. It's not Haunting of Hill House. Okay. It's not the same show. I liked Haunting of Hill House a little bit better, but I still really enjoyed Haunting of Bly Manor. Mm-hmm. I thought it was good. I thought it was well written, well put together. I thought the acting was superb, actually, yeah. for the most part. I mean, yeah. the, um, the woman who played the the black housekeeper, oh, she's, she's she's amazing. Mm, just her, fantastic her episode because you knew something was fucked up the whole time uh-huh, with her. Uh-huh, you know you what I did. mean? Yeah, you're like I get a vibe. Yeah, I was for like, sure. Honey, why don't you want to eat? Yeah, like why why aren't oh, you wait, like why aren't you eating anything? I feel mm-hmm. uncomfy she's about this. She's a ghost. She's <laughs> a goddamn ghost. Yeah, <laughs> I just I know it. Um, oh shit! But I enjoyed it, and I think like if you're looking for something a little spooky to fill that kind of like. Sp- Spooky, you know, Fall. slot. Yeah. Yeah. But you don't want to be like, you don't want to shit your pants. I mm. mean, it's, it's good. It's good it's for good. that. Yeah. Um, I enjoyed it a lot, actually. And I would like something similar. So if you have recommendations um, to fill that void for me, I will take them. Yeah. Cause I, I liked the story. Me too. You know, it wasn't, it, it was one of those that's like, it's got a, a vibe. It's like creepy. It's a, a little bit of a thriller, mm-hmm. but you know, like you, that's what I like too. Yeah. You had a narrator that wasn't annoying, mm-hmm. which oh, I, I appreciated her. because a lot of times when there are narrators in shows, you're like, fuck. Mm-hmm. But I feel like they really did a good balance of like only doing the narration when absolutely, like when it really added to the storyline. Yep. Um, so yeah, I'm, I enjoyed it. Would recommend it. Same. You're like, high recommend. <laughs> um, 
I've just been continuing my Rizzoli and Isles journey and <laughs> um, also the journey of um, Great British Bake Off. Oh, amen. Baking mm-hmm. show. That's it's, what I've been supplementing uh, my time with. Yeah, but otherwise it's literally just been me on a couch Nap on a show. daily mm-hmm. searching for a job on LinkedIn while also simultaneously just binging the map show. Yep. So yep. <laughs> here we are. Oh, here we are. And cheers to that. Mm, 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 mm. Mm. It's a day to celebrate. So if you've got shows that we should watch, if you've got stories to share, um, especially with the holidays coming up, we want them. Go to uh, myworstdatepodcast.com. Um, we're also, oh, I just lost my train of thought. We're also oh. looking for stories for holidays. Oh, I yes. Uh, yeah, I said that. Oh, oh. <laughs> if you want to get us a Christmas gift, go and rate and review us. Yeah. We would really, 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 really appreciate it. And it helps us out a lot. So um, it would be a very, very nice Christmas gift to get a nice review from all of our beautiful listeners. Uh, yeah. And I want to give a shout out to whoever his <laughs> name is Matthew. I don't know. Or at least I think it's like Matthew Gray was the name on <laughs> on our review. And it is made me laugh so hard um so if you have like a clever funny review like that please please for it please leave it because it just brightens up my day 125 percent. so yes and yeah we love you so much cheers, cheers.